All beats me goes impossible. Me goes, my name is Taffrey16, and welcome back to another reaction video. And today we're going to be reacting to the Mrs. Merton show. So, I have gotten a strong amount of comments about this recently. In fact, somebody just the other day uh, popped this in my drive folder. I don't know who it was. Thank you, whoever it was. But somebody randomly put this in there. The reason I uh, haven't got a lot of comments on this recently is because... Apparently there are some similarities to uh, Knowing Me, Knowing You of Alan Partridge. And after doing a little bit more research, there is. Uh, this is about, basically it's a mock talk show uh, with uh, Caroline Ahern uh, as Miss Dorothy Merton, the host, which is a character she's playing, but she's interviewing real celebrities. Uh, Caroline also, of course, was writer and star of the royal family, was in the fast show, was the original narrator of Gogglebox. Rest in peace to her, by the way, she unfortunately passed away uh, in July of 2016 from cancer at just the age of 52. Um, but the premise is of this is immediately interesting. Her playing a character, but interviewing real celebrities. That, that intrigues me a lot. Um, this had four series, 29 total episodes. Uh, ran from 93 to 98. So I do not imagine this is something that needs to be done in order. If it does, well, uh, but I'm going to take the risk that it's not uh, because we're going to do the first Christmas special, which was Series 2, Episode 7, aired on December 24th, 1995. Okay, here we go. Oh man. I like this. <laughs> yeah, they're cranked all the way up. Yeah. to a festive frenzy but it's not all fun and frolics tonight's show it has a message does it and what's the message Happy Christmas! good enough yes, message for me Happy Christmas to one and all and because it's Christmas let's unite the whole of mankind with a song from two of the most popular people in the world ladies and gentlemen Mike and Alma Baldwin <laughs> I thought it was the opening theme to Unforgiven for a second. <laughs> I know I stand in line until you think you have the time to spend the evening with me. And if we go someplace to dance, I know that there's a chance you won't be leaving with me. Afterwards we drop into a quiet little place and have a drink or two And then I go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like I love you <laughs> That's me That you despise the same old lies you heard the night before Though it's just a line to you For me it's true And never seemed so right before <laughs> Let's go to the roses. 
I gotta get me one of them hats. Hopefully not. Really <laughs> Johnson, I thought it was. <laughs> but you know something, that we one didn't end quite so well. Street, don't we? Yeah. All our incarnations. We really do. Thank you very much. And Alma, isn't, isn't she glamorous, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. You know, you're wasted in that cafe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I miss now from Coronation Street. Who? Shamir. Oh, Shamir. Oh. <laughs> and he was such a good actor. Every... <laughs> you know, I, I used to... Was. <laughs> every time, I used to fill up. I used to just fill up. Every, every time he said, I love you, Diddery. <laughs> I'll have to see some Shamir. Oh. Put it on the list. Dusty, what do you do? <laughs> Every time we see Gail in your cafe, yeah, my she's friend, yeah. your friend Gail, <laughs> she's always opening a big catering size tin of beans. <laughs> beans. <laughs> How many beans are they eating with the pig? Canada. She is, though, isn't she? Is, yes, yes. But what are the Granada big knobs like? Because I'll tell you for why. They made such a fuss when Ivy came on with those great big new lips, didn't they? <laughs> Don Brennan came back with a new leg. They didn't bother. <laughs> You that laugh. Storylines, haven't you? You can lose bits. I know, you can. <laughs> is it great fun doing it? Oh, yes, yes it is. Really like, is it your one big family? Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is, actually. <laughs> yeah, who, who in the cast don't you like? Who can't, <laughs> <laughs> who can't you stand? I knew we shouldn't talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know something? <laughs> do you know... Betty Turpin. Betty, Betty Turpin. Yeah. We know Betty well, Turpin, the thing yeah. about Betty was, she yeah. hadn't seen that Billy for 50 years, had she? No. She made him one hot pot. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing, dragging her down the aisle. What's in that hot I pot? That's all it takes sometimes. <laughs> Gosh, we've got the big special tomorrow, Christmas oh, Day, yes. haven't we? Yes. What's happening? We I don't know. Don't no? Know. No, they don't tell us anything. Don't they? No. They don't. We're the last to know. I'll tell you something. What? If there's nothing going on in, in the Rovers, will you give us all a little wave? Yes, yeah. we will. Is that a live Ladies episode? Ladies and gentlemen, will you thank Amanda Barry and Johnny Briggs? Oh, OK. She introduced them as a character. Well, like, he like the last ball from Brooklyn? I wish you a little Christmas. <laughs> I will, of course, be sharing my bird and stuffing with Mrs. Merton. Oh. <laughs> Hold up. At this time, Pause? Turn to Christmas, and I know what you're all wondering. What sort of a Christmas does a top lady Euro MP have? Well, here to tell us, the one and only Glennis Gennick. You got that Hillary Clinton here. Lovely to have you on, Glennis. Yes. You look very festive. Oh, well, I tried to look festive. I thought it was appropriate. No, it is. What with it being Christmas Eve and everything. That's right, <laughs> yes. Put us all out of our misery. What's a Kinnick Christmas like? Uh, much the same as anyone else's Christmas, I suppose. Yes. Peasants, kids, my Just father's more money. there, all the family. and uh, So it's much the same as anyone else. Mince pies, sausage rolls, turkey. I can just see it all now, you know. Neil's there, snoozing yeah, on the sofa. Yeah. His party hat all askew, yes. roasting his nuts by the Beautiful. fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Christmas is all about, yeah. though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Do you have a big turkey? Um, <laughs> quite small, actually, yeah. Really? But is Neil a, a breast or a leg man? <laughs> He's a light meat man. A light, is he? Mm, yeah. Good answer. Mm, lovely. 
that's pressed, I suppose you'd say. Oh, yes. yes. Mm. But, you know, in my house, what we do, we have my friend Lily round for Christmas dinner, oh, yeah. mm. and her bladder isn't 100%, you know. That can be a problem. It is, it's... because she can't seem to hold it all up, you know. Yeah. And we don't put Markham and Wise on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's no control. And the thing is, my husband, it doesn't help the situation. He's hovering there with a the bucket and he's whistling the theme tune to the Dan Busters, you know. <laughs> Can you imagine what it's like? And she's happy enough with that, though. She's oh, she yet. thoroughly yeah. enjoys yeah. it. It's just dust and left to mop it all up, yeah. you know. Yeah. Paddling Wellington's <laughs> great. <laughs> Can see you've been there. That doesn't there. sound very festive. <laughs> no. <laughs> But how is Neil? He's absolutely fine. Is he? Yeah, yeah. He's working on trains and boats and planes because he's responsible for transport. Is he? So that's his, yeah. Well, it won't do much damage there, no. will it? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not in this country. No! I always think me and you, Glennis, we've got a lot in common. I think we do. Because my husband, he's never been Prime Minister either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did he try? Oh, yeah. Well, at one time, yeah. you know, he wanted to become, like, a local MP for our constituency, which but... Is, yeah, which is where? It's, uh, well, it's Stockport. Oh, yes. right. Yeah, well, he'd have won if he stood for Labour. Was he, in, was he going to be a Labour candidate? Well, what happened was, at the, at the last moment, he oh, couldn't right. be bothered, you know. <laughs> and he couldn't decide which party oh. either, you know. Well, that would be a bit of a problem, I think. But what's a typical bedroom scenario for you and Neil? <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose there is a typical bedroom scenario <laughs> for me or for anyone else, is there? No. I mean, could you tell me what your typical bedroom, bedroom well, scenario is? Well, yes, it's me on my own. <laughs> 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 my husband in the box room. <laughs> Let's talk about Tony Blair. Now, he's... I don't know about him in the bedroom, either. <laughs> <laughs> You're very sharp, <laughs> Glennis. But, you know... <laughs> He's a very fresh-faced bonny lad, isn't he? He is indeed. What do you make of him? I like him very much. We've been friends for years, yeah. I'm sure he is wife and the kids. Mm. Sherry Blair. Mm. She sounds like a dessert, doesn't she? <laughs> she does, yeah. Is she a pudding? <laughs> she's a QC, so I wouldn't have I think being a QC means disqualifies her from being a pudding. But you and Neil, I mean, it's not... Not back to the bedroom again, No. Well, no. no. if you want. <laughs> <laughs> So at this point, Glennis, I'm going to throw you open in here to members of the audience. Okay. Who would like... Isn't she lovely? Oh, no. <laughs> Who would like to ask Glennis a question? What about Anne? What would you like? Any regrets, Glennis, that you didn't make number 10? Or are you perfectly happy what you're doing? You'd rather do what you're doing. I think we will always regret that we didn't win the general election, not just for personal reasons, but because we've seen in the last five years what yes. a tragedy yes. it was that we didn't win. Did you vote for Anne? Oh. No, yes. she didn't. Yes, I did. <laughs> did you? Did, did you? you? Did you? Yes. Uh, I couldn't get out that day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, you've <laughs> given the party a call. They just sent a car. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you thank the lovely girl? It's like, like, get her out. Have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Thanks, buddy. The other day, I visited the local orphanage, something I do every year at this time, in a Princess Diana type way, though I don't go on about it all the time on Panorama. <laughs> but amongst the little orphans, my heart went out to one little boy in particular. Oh, no. So I've brought him here for us all to have a look at. Will you welcome <laughs> we'll have a little look at. Tommy Regan? <laughs> Hey, focused on the path. I used to do that. All right, get from point A to B. Just look at the floor. Look where Hello, I'm going. Sit down. It's lovely to see you. Got those Ralphie and glasses. Tommy, tell the ladies and gentlemen, how old are you? Seven. Seven. And I visited your orphanage, and I brought you all a present, didn't I? Yes, a Satsuma. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, they're not cheap. <laughs> but Tommy. Are you looking forward to Christmas? No. No? Why not, Tommy? Because I'll be in the orphanage. Oh. Aww. Well, Tommy, I'm going to do something very special for you. 
something that you like more than anything else in the world. Do you know what that is, Tom? I never said Suma. I'm going to sing for you. <laughs> I am. Bring on the hidden piano. Yes. You come with me, Tommy. The hidden piano. Come with me. Tommy's like, good God, why? Him, Sylvia. Yeah. You could just take him home, yeah. couldn't you? Yes, please. Mind you, you live in Wigan, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The best where you are, Tommy. Yes. <laughs> in that door, to him. <laughs> Tommy's oh, Prince Tommy. Chip. <laughs> Tommy, I'm dedicating this song especially to you. Wait. Because do you know what he is, ladies and gentlemen? Do you know what he is? He's the little boy that Santa Claus forgot And goodness knows he didn't want a lot He sent a note to Santa for some soldiers and a drum It's fucked up It broke his little heart when he found Santa hadn't come in the street he all the lucky boys and wanders home to last year's broken toys. I feel so sorry for that laddie. He hasn't got a daddy. <laughs> Christmas comes but once a year for every girl and boy. The laughter and the joy. Look at her face! <laughs> each new toy. I'll tell you of a little boy who lives across the way. This little fella's Christmas is just another day. Him, Tommy. <laughs> the little boy that Santa Claus. And so goodness knows he didn't want a lot. <laughs> Sent no to Santa for some soldiers and a drum. It broke his lid. <laughs> Great, now he doesn't have a dad and he has clinical depression. Tommy, Tommy. have you got a little kiss for an old lady? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, will you thank the lovely orphan boy that is Tommy? Oh, she almost broke there. <laughs> I heard it in her voice. Poor Tommy. I hope you don't go mad when Glynis back there. <laughs> Did you enjoy that real life often? Anyway, it's Christmas, isn't it, tomorrow? And what do you do on Christmas Day? Well, actually, I, I live out alone now. I'm a widow, oh, yeah. so I'm going to my daughter in Blackpool. She's at the back. Oh, there. is she? Which yes. is Anne's daughter? Susan. Hello, and Susan, and her husband. Yes. Lovely treat you've got tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like carol singers? Yes, I do. Yes, I because do. Because we had some round the other night and we didn't make a sound, you know, we just listened. Otherwise, they'd know we're in a <laughs> one <laughs> <laughs> So, what about you, Irene? Mean, what do you do Christmas oh, I Day? I like to be with the family. Do you? Yes, yes. But it is a time for families, Christmas. And Bernard, Bernard, you've got a sister, haven't you? Yes, I have, yeah. And what's her name? Flory. 
Where does she live, Bailey? She lives in Montreal, in Canada. In Canada? Yeah. And how long is it since you've seen her, Bernard? Oh, it's over 40 years, I'd say. 42 <laughs> years, I think, you'll find, Bernard. Oh. Now, have you found memories of Florrie in Canada? Oh, yes. She was the next one to me in the family, so we grew up together, you know. And I you miss her very much. You've never been able to afford to go and see her, no. have you? No. Now, Bernard... <laughs> If Florrie was to come down these stairs tonight, yeah. would that make your Christmas? Oh, absolutely. It would be wonderful. Well, Bernard, you want to go on surprise, surprise, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Well, they do on that program. Oh, poor There's Bernard. There's nothing better than spreading a bit of goodwill. Again. Absolutely, cooks. <laughs> Bernard's going to commit Hello, harbour side tonight. I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless. <laughs> the, very, the very thought of my next guest will make your mouths water. No, it's not an opal fruit. It's TV cook Gary Rhodes. <laughs> oh, whoa. Look at that. I'm familiar with him. Rest in peace to him as well, I believe. At least he died, like, right before the pandemic, actually. Oh, God. I remember God, hearing about you know. that. Hello. <laughs> I like the hairdo. Thank you. I was going to say exactly the same thing. <laughs> but, Gary, when did you first become interested in cooking? Um, from a very young age, probably about yes. the age of about 13 or 14, cooking yes. for my little sister at home. Really? And then uh, it went on to cooking Sunday lunch for the whole family and... That's how it started. Do you ever think that, you know, there's a, a sort of a, a Jesse element in a grown man cooking? <laughs> Does it look like it? I mean, no, not at all. I think if you look at it, chefs really, the, all the great chefs we've had have all yes. been men, haven't they? Yes. Lots of brilliant women chefs now, though. Do you like Delia Smith? Good right? save. Delia is an institution, isn't she? She's like, shit, wait a minute. Brilliant lady. <laughs> brilliant lady. But, you know... My favourite cook was always Fanny Craddock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm always thinking of her. How often do you think of Fanny? <laughs> I would say, yeah, she's often on my mind. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She is, yeah. But, of course, you did the road around Britain, that mm -hmm. cookery series. Did you enjoy doing that? I did very much, yeah. Yes. It was good fun, meeting people. That's what I enjoy more than anything, is meeting people and getting them excited about cooking, you see. Well, you do that. Yeah, I try. But my husband, he, he's a big fan of tripe, you know, mm -hmm. and he loves your program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's the one thing I don't like and don't eat really? is tripe. No, but I watch yours. <laughs> Husband, he won't eat anything spicy, you know, like spicy food, that yeah. sort of thing. But you know what he always says? Whatever you eat, no matter how fancy it is, all comes out the same way. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I know exactly what you're saying, yeah. But he won't eat sweet corn. No. No. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Yeah. But let's it not talk about toilet business, because mm. you're going to be cooking for us. Christmas logs. Can you make them? <laughs> I think we all tend to have them after Christmas Day, don't we? <laughs> oh, Gary, you dirty beast. <laughs> but do you know something? Do you know whose bowels are made of steel? Judith Chalmers. Yeah. That's <laughs> what never told me. Yeah. But do you know, one time, we had our Christmas dinner, and the next day, my husband, I shouldn't really be saying this, but my husband did a whole Brussels sprout on Boxing really? Day. Yeah, really? you know. <laughs> but he, t he came down and he told me about it, and I don't know, I was more worried about the fact he'd been looking at what oh. he'd done. The thing is, it just shows you must have buttered them well. Ah, yes, indeed, they slid out. Yeah. But, <laughs> but say, for example, you know, I'm having a dinner party, Gary, mm -hmm. for eight people, yeah. and it's six o'clock, and they're all coming at half past six, and I've only got two pounds of potatoes and nothing else in the house. Yeah. How can I make a satisfying, tasty three-course meal for? <laughs> <laughs> 
Have you got a phone? Yes. A takeaway. <laughs> there you are. Get, get a takeaway. Oh, and you that... could actually make a nice potato soup from that, couldn't you? A friend of mine, Lily, she always says she can make a tasty meal for four for under a pound. For under a pound? Under a pound. Yeah. But that does involve shoplifting, you know? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Give me the secret. Give me the secret. I'll have a go. But you're going to cook something for us tonight, aren't you, Gary? I've got something very special. For what what are you going to make? Well, it's something I doubt you've had for a long time. It's a really good stuffing. Stuffing. Who would like to see Gary rolled stuffing? <laughs> there we go. Gary. Have you washed your hands? <laughs> they smell oh, so clean. Lovely. Oh, nice? Can I bring some of my friends along to watch? I'd love it. Well, shall we have Enid, Let's Sylvia have and Liz? Come Listen, along. let me get prepared here. Sylvia, you come over here. Enid and Liz there. Lovely. So here we go. No, go this on. is going to be nice and easy, nice and simple, and I'm going to show you exactly what a good stuffing I can do. <laughs> right. Stop smiling like that. <laughs> All I've actually got here, pan, little knob, of butter oh. and uh, <laughs> 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 it's right, chubby brown. I mean, <laughs> the next thing I've just got some onions. Onion. Now these I've previously cooked again in just a little touch of butter. I want this pan to get hot, but you'll hear it in a minute. The next thing I'm going to add is some lemon because we all know about that lemon and thyme stuffing. Yes. So I thought, you know, let's <gasps> do a stuffing. Let's give a stuffing we all know, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. Are they your breasts? I can see. <laughs> Because you said to me, make some stuff and there's too big breasts to fill. I didn't expect it quite as close. Now, can you see what is happening in I'm there? I'm trying to look at that. I'm looking at that. Oh, worries me. So was I. <laughs> oh, I'm oh. getting excited about this. Now, the Eat most important place is a touch of salt, a little touch of pepper, and then to bind this. I mean, that's it. That's been made in seconds. And the only other thing I'm going to do is add a few white breadcrumbs bread to make crumbs. this into that sort of stuffing the texture. camera angle is on purpose. It's delicious. Can I taste it? Yes, yeah, go on. Like you've made it. Oh, <laughs> What's it like? Oh, sensational. Is it? It's it lovely that he loves his own cooking. I want you to, I want you to smell that. I want you to I, tell I'm me. Gonna... Get the nose on that. Oh, do you know what? <laughs> it's like a vivacious number, but em eminently palatable. Yes. You know. I like <laughs> oh, he's roasting tonight. Nothing he Look says. No. Ladies, I want you to try this. You've got to taste it. Taste that. It's made in seconds. What's it like? Oh, it's beautiful. Is it lovely? Oh, it is. Mm. Liz, mm, there thanks. with both your friends. <laughs> thank you. Taste that so. <laughs> oh, so, I got so oh, Gary. Gary. What do you think? Gary, it tastes no, like it. Yeah. It tastes professional. It's not bad, is it? No, it's like, it's like a party on my tongue. I must say that not all of my stuffings are as quick as that, but, no. you know, I'm glad to say. <laughs> that is so lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. will you thank Gary Rhodes and his magnificent stuffing? You stuffed them real good, Gary. Okay. Rest in peace. I'd like to thank all my guests tonight, Elmer and Mike Baldwin, the little orphan Tommy. Rest Gladys in peace to most Gimmick, people here, if I'm being Gary honest. Rose. Happy and I mean, if we're being honest, <laughs> rest in peace to the majority of the people in the studio. <laughs> That was a lot of fun.
Fantastic. That was about what I'd hoped it would be, to be honest. That that was <laughs> that was a lot of fun. The best segment was definitely the MP until Rhodes at the end. I don't know. That that might have that might have taken it at the end. The, the orphanage the orphan song was so fucking funny. So I, I noticed the um the uh, the audience is majority pensioners it seems my question is are they in on it too or not i guess i have a feeling they might not be <laughs> like i wonder how much how much i'm sure some of them were like the guy who hadn't seen his sister in four two years i'm sure he was in on it but i feel like some of them weren't <laughs> i don't know e either way it's it's hilarious so there's a lot of episodes of that show. I believe I can put it on YouTube. So if you want to see more, uh, I'm definitely down to do more uh, in the new years. Let me let me know if there's like, uh, let me know if there's a signature episode of this show that I should watch. Uh, but for now, that is going to do with my reaction to Mrs. Merton show. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, be sure to leave it a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, my Twitter, I stream every single day in my second channel for free 16 views, my Twitter. If you want to follow me on my Patreon, if you want to support me on my daily motion, all things are in the video description down below, as well as Twitch VOD channel and the community Reddit. Also, thank you to all my patrons currently named in the video description. If you didn't know, you can be a patron on me for as little as $1 or one pound. And in addition to your name in there, you also get extra reaction videos as well as review comments up to date early, sometimes more. With all that being said, though, my name is Tanfrey Cassini. This has been my reaction to Mrs. Merton's show, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.